Hello everyone, today I will show you how to compute the effective seismic weight of the structure using hand calculation and also I will show you how the masses are lumped at the center of each story and how ETAPs do it and of course we will compare the results obtained from hand calculation with the results obtained from ETAPs software. First I will go to ASCE and I will show you where we can use the effective seismic weight for example, for computing the base shear from the equivalent lateral force procedure, we need this W. And in order to define this inside ETAPS, we should go to Define and Mass Source. And by default, there is an existing mass source defined inside ETAP. As shown here, we can add the load pattern we want. I will include superimpose that load also. I will just uh, include all the dead loads of dead load or the self weight and the superimposed dead load for computing the mass source or the effective seismic weight. Actually, I will enable these two options. We don't need them. Just do it in this way. And engineers sometimes they include the live load or a portion of the live load, for example, 25% of the live load. However, we don't need to do it here because this building is a residential building and normally we include live load in storage area, malls and parking garage and in similar structures. Therefore, we don't need to add the live load for this model. Okay. And okay. And actually, this is what all we need to do inside ETAPS. Just I will run the model and however, I will go now to the Excel to show you how we can compute the effective seismic weight and I will show you the way ETAPs follow to compute masses lumped at the center of each story. For the table here, I put just some information that we need. And actually, the effective seismic weight is just very simple. Uh, to compute any weight of any component, we just need the unit weight or the density and the volume. Therefore, if we multiply the density by the volume, then we will obtain the weight. And this is all what I'm doing here in this sheet. This is how we can compute it. However, we need to provide this information. For example, the effective area, which is the area of the slab, the range between, for example, story number one to five, minus, of course, the opening shown here. We need slab thickness, unit weight, the superimposed that load we have already assigned, and the live load here, I don't use it actually, but I just type it here, but we don't need it. And for the second table here, some information about the walls. We need to know the length of wall. For example, these walls all here at the sides have a length of 54.5 meter and they have a thickness of 0 0.5. And for the core walls at the center here, they have 90.4 meter. This is just some information about the length and the thickness of each wall. Same information here in the same way. And for columns, we just need to know, to know the number of columns per each story or per each floor. Dimensions, of course. And this is all what we need to know about the column in order to compute the weight. Okay, this table summarizes the weight of a story or of one story per, per, per range. For example, between story number one and five, the slab weight is just equal to the effective area multiplied by slab thickness multiplied by unit weight. And always make sure about the units and this is all what you need. And for columns, for example, let me show you the columns. For example, the columns here as shown here, uh, one by one mean dimension of C1 multiplied by three, which is story height multiplied by F21, which is 19 or the number of columns multiply by h4 which is the unit weight and in the same manner i have did this uh, calculation for each column i'm just multiplying number of columns by cross section dimension by the unit weight by the height in order to obtain the weight of all columns in story number one for walls i just did the same we need to multiply wall lengths by story height by wall thickness by the unit weight and for simple impose that load it's just simply the, the value we have assigned over the slabs multiplied by the effective area. And these here, these computation are just the same as what I discussed here. I have computed in the same way. For example, here there's just a special case that 
uh, this column C2 here at center which have a green color it just extended between story number 6 to 8 therefore we just need to compute column weight two times one including C2 and one without including C2 okay actually when we assign a rich diaphragm this is what we did we have lumped the masses of each story at the center of each story however how e tabs do it how we lump it based on what okay let me show you here I will just draw a very simple drawing for example if we have this is three story building this uh, okay these circles mean the mass of each story which is lumped at the center actually we are assuming that all the masses are lumped at the center of each story maybe let me use another color okay okay for computing the mass uh, that is lumped at the center of this story we need also to include the half of the weight of the vertical element above this story plus half of the weight of the vertical element in the story itself of course in addition to the slab weight or slab mass therefore this is how etabs do it he just include half from above and half from below in order to compute the mass that is lumped at the center of each story okay if I click here the weight for this one for the mass lumped or the weight lumped at the center of story number one I just sum these values actually uh, maybe I should say for example half of the column weight from above and half of the column weight from below but actually it's just the same because story number two have the same column weight and this will lead just to the same formula I typed here for example let me show you where there is some difference for example in story number five I have include first the slab weight plus half of the column weight from story number five plus half of the column weight from story number six plus half of the weight of the walls in story number five plus half of the wall weight from story number six just in this way we can do it and for example the last story is just equal to the slab weight plus half of the column weight plus half of the wall weight plus the superimpose dead load therefore this is how etabs lump the masses at the center of each story okay now I want you to know something very important if we have assigned a mesh for walls from the option of wall auto mesh option therefore these values will be uh, wrong if we compare them to etabs because as I show you before etabs have announced this problem when using the wall auto mesh option the masses are not clamped correctly at the center of each story this is just the idea okay now let's check uh, if we obtain the correct uh, results from other definition mass source mass data sorry and mass summary by story I will click OK okay now the unit is kilogram now and these two columns have the same value then I will copy just one okay let me copy to here and if I go to this to Google I will just copy this value because we need to convert from kilogram to kilonewton I will copy this value here okay now let's check if there is difference between what we are calculating and what etabs give us okay as shown all are zero except the first five story however the difference is very small the difference is minor maybe I have added or I have missed something but the difference is just very small and it's minor therefore the effective seismic weight 
of the structure obtained from E tabs is just this value 668005 kilonewton and the value we have obtained from our calculation is just this one and the difference is 16 kilonewton which is very small number and thank you for watching